Welcome to the Top of the Morning Show with your girl TT from the D. It is Thankful Thursday. I am thankful for you. I hope that you're thankful for me. And let's be thankful for the world in which we live. Even if it's a lot of chaos going on around you, or you just encounter some chaos, or you heard about some chaos, let's just be thankful that we are still amongst the land of the living. And let's pray that we do better because we know better. This morning, we're going to tap in, and I'm not going to hold you long because it's a thankful Thursday. We're going to talk about the four seasons of every relationship, okay? Now, you know that we've heard over the years, and maybe you haven't, but if you haven't, I want to put you on game, that there are seasons of relationships, whether that's platonic or love interest relationships, family shifts. I think I tapped in on that just a tad bit during a live the other day. But all relationships go through a number of shifts and changes throughout its life cycle. Just like the weather, winter, spring, summer, fall, right? They have their own unique seasons. Pretty much we can kind of tell what the weather's going to be like. We can look out or if we know the months. You know, if you look at January, February, you're like, oh, it's winter, right? March, April. Ooh, we in May. We get ready. We in spring, baby. June, July, August. We're like, yes, summer. Then you got September, October, November. Then you got fall and you have winter and it goes on and on and on, right? And those seasons have their own rhythm and rhymes, right? We find high moments, low moments. Some people in the summer, you love to go vacationing, being on beaches, living by the water, staying by the water. In the winter, you might like going skiing, snowboarding, spring. You might like to just, you know, take a nice little cruise on the other side of the earth, somewhere that's hot because now it's kind of cool and chill. You get what I'm saying. But let's talk about the spring. The first season of any relationship is spring. And it's often the happiest, right? And in those romantic relationships, it's that time where you're birthing newness into that relationship. He's getting to know you ladies and ladies and fellas, I should say. Fellas, you're getting to know her and you're exploring, you're venturing all kind of exciting things, new restaurants, new bars, lounges, vacation spots, outings. You're creating moments. And during this time, we start to learn what we like, what we don't like. Now, some of us are not upfront and honest and bold to say, you know what, I really didn't enjoy that. Because that person that we're trying to win or we're trying to impress, we don't want to make them, especially if they're having a funky good time, we don't want to make them feel like this ain't our thing. This ain't my scene. So we just endure it. But they don't know that you don't like it. So they continue to want to do those type of things. Why not? Because you are leading them to think that you enjoy it. So while you're seeming to be in delightful feels of joy, you're excited, you're really not. You're really in darkness. Your spouse, your significant other, your boo thing, they're hungry for more and more of what you don't even really like, right? Then we get into the summer, often referred as the honeymoon stages. It's kind of like, that's in a positive state. But think about it in a negative set. When a person's in a, uh, uh, a not so healthy relationship and then they get into something and, and, and they can have a verbal altercation, you know, unfortunately, they might have a physical altercation. And then they talk it out. They discuss it after spirits have calmed down, minds have come into a holding point, And then they go through the honeymoon stage, which is normally led by the person who later in life you may look at as a narcissist. That's a whole nother show. But they take you through a honeymoon stage where it's kind of like, mm, if you think back to Tyler Perry's movie, uh, Diary, is it Diary? No, no. Family Reunion. I think it was Family Reunion. Medea's family reunion when all the families was coming together and it was two sisters the mom just used and pimped her daughter pretty much this abusive guy and even when the daughter said mom he beats me she's like well what did you do and you gotta do this and you not gonna mess this up for me and this and that. I'm like what he took her through honeymoon stages the daughter you know he would slap her down or beat her and then he would serenade her with an orchestra you know give her stack some money or do some extravagant something just to get her into the mindset of saying maybe it's not so bad yeah it's that bad run run like forest okay run now in a different format generally look at it like oh they could do no wrong much as we look at uh the red flags and we act like eh, is it yellow you know you know that's red 
you know that's red and you plan you plan with it and we excuse those things which could be little annoying things that could turn into a huge annoying things because every time something happens or that one thing that you don't like happens it annoys you over and over but again if you don't talk about it in the spring season you're not going to really have a good handle on it in the summer spring in the summertime of that spring season and it's time to take off the rose colored glasses that so many of us walk around in this world looking through and peering through so that we can learn how to really make happy better memories that's going to take you throughout your life journey so that you can enter into autumn right fall here in the physical world autumn signals the time of death time of rebirth what does that mean tt well death like flowers die certain plants die because they need the heat they need the sun and so now other things that can actually grow and in the winter fall months they come forth so things that once was have to pass away so that new things can be birthed and when we enter this phase you know it comes with the cracks and the snow and the wrinkles the frowns and sometimes the tears and it's like when the relationship shifts into that later stage and we start to see our partner's flaws and their faults, the ones we've been to about, and then the ones that we were so taken back by the things we were pretending we didn't see that we honestly didn't see the real flaws and faults of the ones that we say we care about and we love where we could address it or learn that this is their quirkiness or whatever that looks like. And for that... You start to deal with complex emotions. Some things that are minute are blown out of proportion. You on a battlefield and you said, this is not my battle. This is not my war. But you didn't do anything to deviate the mission. And at this point, that's when we start to get the nagging and the complaining, the bickering, the the fighting. Then, you know, we go to, to the judgment zone. We go to argument court. You know, you go to the distancing the cold shoulders and then you enter winter though we may try to change our partners encourage them to be a certain way we are who we are they are who they are we don't have any right to change anybody if that's not what they choose that they want to do and vice versa we have to learn when we're in the beginning of these relationships what are we literally looking for? You know, there are four stages, four seasons of every relationship. But are you only looking at the summer? Are you only looking at the spring? Are you only look- you're not never looking at the winter in the beginning? Ever, ever, ever are we looking at that? And we have to learn how to embrace, give up some things, put down some things, take some things. But they all should come with love, grace, mercy. We need to learn how to handle conflict, disagreements, right? How to become more empathetic, how more passionate. Passionately towards that person that you're in that relationship, right? Creating bridges instead of tunnels. See, bridges help us get over situations. Tunnels leave us at a standstill, right? We have to learn how to tap into our support groups. And I'm not talking about the ones that you don't get a support group of a group of people or somebody who's going through what you're going through. And they they not looking healthy. They not looking good. It's not looking good for them. Why is that your chosen support group? I don't know why some people like to go to the, the support group that's not doing well and just get a part of their group. Like, what? Aren't we trying to find resolution, resolve, so that we can get back to the beautifulness of what a relationship really can hold for you? At the end of the day, we want to be at peace. We want to love. We want to grow. We want to change. We want to expand, right? We know that there are no perfect relationships. There are no perfect men and women in this world. And there never shall be. We want to learn how to walk away from situations that could really cost you a relationship that's not that serious. And not saying the relationship's not that serious, but the circumstance that could tear away a relationship is not that serious, right? Some people will throw away a lifetime of work for a moment of unmeaningless, unmeaningful relationships. But we have to take ourselves to the mirror from time to time and have a self-check, y'all. 
We got to really learn how to look at our hand. Put, Look in the mirror and put your hands up showing all five of your fingers. Now, I don't care if you have it open like your palm pacing or the back of your hand. Doesn't matter how you look at it in the mirror. And I want you to then shift your hand like you point in the mirror. It's one finger that's not going to allow you to point the blame on that mirror on what you see. And that's that thumb. That thumb is like you got some accountability too. What are you doing to change? If you don't like what you see in that mirror, what are you doing? Because you're going to sit there and point, well, he was like and so-and-so, and then she was like, and I don't like them. What about what you contributed to that situation, to the circumstance? Did you open your mouth when you should have been opening it, when things were okay, where we could have ironed it out? Or did you keep your mouth closed? And never let on that you were unhappy, disappointed, not feeling it. And then you got into the next level of that relationship and you decided, hmm, I'm going to let go of this, but I ain't going to let go of that. You can't play those games in these relationships. And sometimes they can, they can turn into something so traumatic and they become so unhealthy that we end up looking at relationships for something that they aren't. We start looking at relationships in a light that we never should have had to really look at because in relationships we are looking like oh okay but if we start understanding that all relationships have seasons winter spring summer and fall just like the seasons we live in in the real world right every relationship has a different season right and if you know that you're going through that that will help you unpack Where am I at right now in this stage of this relationship? How can I grasp and get a handle on this relationship? And then once you do, you can say, okay, if I just would have just been upfront and honest, because who are you lying to, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? You're lying to the person that you're trying to get, but how long can you hold on to a person with a lie? And then more importantly, you're lying to yourself when you look in that mirror and say, I do love her. I mean, I kind of love her. I do love him. I mean, I kind of love him. When you know you don't really care for them, then I hate when you have to say this to yourself or you say it to somebody else and they're looking at you with the, you know how a dog come up to you and then you say some things and then they might make that, and then they tilt their head. Don't you hate when somebody say something to you, you do that, you tilt your head like, what? Just be you. Just own it. Why waste time, waste energy, waste relationships, stalling on what you know you don't even want to manifest? Learn what season you are in in these relationships. We ain't talking about the friendships. That's a whole nother podcast. We'll get into that. Maybe tomorrow morning. But today we're talking about the relationships. The ones that can ultimately lead you to a marriage. um, A really deep, meaningful, healthy relationship. A deep, meaningful covenant. Learn how to get a handle on it in the beginning. So therefore, you can know... This is going to be amazing. Or you know what? This isn't the one for me. Because some of you got married. Some of you are dating someone. You've been in a relationship. And you're like, I don't know when he's going to make his mind up. But he got this amount of time to make a decision. I don't know when she's going to make her mind up. But she got this amount of time to make a decision. And then it's like, hmm. You could have avoided that if you just would have just dealt with the season in which you were in. Well, that's all I got for you this morning on this thankful Thursday. I hope that some of that might have resonated with you. I think that there's a lot to unpack with this segment this morning. Tune in tomorrow morning, Friday, and we will talk about the seasons of relationships and friendships. Because sometimes those can be very chaotic and hectic. And we try to hold on to people that are not meant to hold on, be held on to. Not because they ain't worthy, but because they may have another place they need to be on their journey. And you're trying to hold them with you. They may have something to give, not even may. They have something they have to give to somebody else. If they don't fit, if you don't fit, that means that that season is up and you need to be free. And you need to let them be free too. That's all I have for you right now. This is Girl Titi from the D. 